everyone, it's Jeannie here. And today I am so honored to be joined by platinum recording artist, Grammy Dove Award winning artist. She's a legend, Amy Grant. We are going to be talking about a bunch of things, but particularly the 30th anniversary release of her album, Heart in Motion. Amy, thank you so much for taking time to talk with me. Thank you, Jeannie. It's fun it's to walk down memory lane and uh, and share it with you. Yeah, thanks. So what's really unique about this is I didn't grow up in the Christian anything. <laughs> so I, in the last decade is when I've really committed my life more and just really discovered uh, music and, and just more about just your journey. So it's been really a blessing to kind of not be in the thick of it when everything was happening for you, but to discover you as an artist and even who you are now. So I just wanted to say that I think it's, it's awesome to, um, to just see the mark that you've left in an industry that I think needs authentic people making uh, music for the soul. Oh, well, thank you. So how is it 30 years here? Like looking back, did you ever anticipate that hard emotion would really change your life the way it has or catapult you um, into where you are now? Hmm. Um, you know, I honestly, um, probably just like everybody, you just live one year at a time. <laughs> <laughs> then you look back and go, oh, wow, that was a game changer. But when you're in the middle of something, you don't really think about it, you know? Mm -hmm. And I, um, I, I'm 60 years old, so half my life ago is when I was making that record. And, um, and half my life ago before that, when I was 15, I got on stage for the first time. I, I mm -hmm. was in high school. I was involved with this youth group that was really vibrant. It was in a mixed um, community. Um, and I would go back to my school and say, hey, there's nobody like finding musical language for the faith journey, which is so endlessly mm -hmm. fascinating. And mm -hmm. um, anyway, so that's why I first started writing songs. I mean, I loved all the music I grew up with. Uh, Carol King, Joni Mitchell, uh, James Taylor, John Denver, lots of bands, the Beatles, Elvis, yeah. um, Elton John. I just, Aretha Franklin, Michael, J the Jackson Five. I mean, I loved music. I loved my record collection. And so I started, you know, from 15 to 30, I was just trying to find musical language for, uh, and songs to, to talk about the faith journey. And wow. then all of a sudden, you know, right around 1989, 90, rolled around 30 years ago. And I had put out a lot of music already. I was at such a fun, joyful time in life. I had two young kids. Um, I was actually pregnant with my daughter, making that record, Heart in Motion. And it was just, my sister lived next door, and she had four kids. They were always at our house. And, mm -hmm. and I just made a record that reflected that time in life. And what mm -hmm. I was not, I mean, every record you work just as hard on, you write you, in the studio, but, but that record, Heart in Motion, brought together a community of creative people in a way that I had never experienced. Mm -hmm. And so um, three producers, some new songwriters, and it did all of a sudden feel like this thing I'd sort of been doing at one pace, you know, for 15 years, <laughs> all of a sudden mm -hmm. like, whew, <laughs> and, so uh, it was a change it, it was, was a change. everything yeah. got busier and bigger and happening faster and um yeah I look back on that time and it was like being shot out of a cannon it was wonderful <laughs> and a lot of hard work I go to yeah. shows now and it will be the big production and you know we did our it was a, probably a simpler version of that but yeah. arena shows and all that and I just I just sit there clapping for that artist on stage going I'm so glad I'm where I am now <laughs> <laughs> I know what that feels like and I'd right. rather be here <laughs> oh, yeah. well it's it, you know what's so unique about you um in particular I know your good friend Michael W. Smith um you know we think of him and his music and he's a worship leader right he yeah. creates worship music 
And I think what's so unique about you, and I think which is why I identified with you coming from a, very, a secular background, I was even, I was a pop singer. So when I became a Christian, same thing. I'm just like, I, I don't naturally write worship music. What I write is music as a Christian from this perspective now to the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it, do you feel like that is your niche market where it's not so much, yes, you will worship God through your music, but you're talking to the Christian community from a Christian perspective or to any community. Um, is that kind of what Amy Grant has kind of trailblazed your own way? Um, who I, I think I even look at it in a more simple way than that. I mean, music has been a lifeline for me. Right. It's been a lifeline, whether I'm listening to somebody else or writing my own song, but I, you know, what I try to do is go, I don't ever want to forget this feeling. I'm going to put that in a song or mm. man, I am so struggling with direction in my own life or I'm so, I have questions about this or I love this person or but to me, it's always been, <clears throat> I think I just write first and foremost for the audience of me. Right. And, um, and then, you know, and then somebody will come along and say, I felt the exact same way you did. And so right. I think when I'm writing, well, I, it, if there's any sort of, um, uh, um, maybe mission or goal. <laughs> I was just thinking, I feel like I write more for an audience of one. Mm -hmm. And so whether it's, I don't know. And, and I feel like that's kind of the narrative voice of my songs is right. always about close proximity to me. And so mm -hmm. those songs kind of fi have found their own audience and yeah. yeah. Well, I find that in, in the Christian community, there isn't a lot of people who uh, actually do that in the reflective, like, it's kind of a testimony, you know, you're like, hey, I came out of this, or I discovered this, <laughs> you know, um, in my own journey, and, and we, we need voices that way. So I appreciate that from you, I really do. Well, thank you. I think all of us just, we sort of do what comes naturally to us. Right. Mm -hmm. And I always look at... Um, you know, there's so many creative voices. There's so many ways to do everything. And I, you know, honestly, when I, I never even thought about comparing myself to anybody when I was young. I mean, I was just young, stupid. I was like, yeah, no, I don't sing very high. I don't have a lot of vocal gymnastics. I just do what I do. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden you have some success and then you go, oh, I, I can't do what those other people do. I just do what I do. And there's right. a weird thing that happens where you <clears throat> feel like you have to kind of measure up to some standard. Yeah. And then you <laughs> hopefully push through that and go, mm -hmm. we all just have our own unique voice. Right. And, but, but I, 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 somewhere, I guess, you know, in the last third of my life, I really saw the just the creative community as going, oh, it's all of us. We are all telling the story of life through music. All of us are from, you know, we're telling the story of our culture. Some of us are telling the story of our faith journey, but mm -hmm. the arts just tell the story of man, of mm -hmm. mankind. And so mm -hmm. I, you know, these days I tend to look at everybody and go, oh yeah, you're part of the matrix. Okay. You're telling, you're doing this, <laughs> yes. you know, but it yes. all creates this big, beautiful picture. Mm. So That's uh, beautiful. You know, I was thinking um, for someone, you know, you've been in the industry for so long. Um, I think of people like Lauren Daigle, who for now, you know, now she's, uh, would probably be considered the artist who has, you know, doing Christian music, but has had mainstream success as you, as you have. Um, and although you still hear the religious voices <laughs> that are like, oh, dear Lord, you know, they're going into the mainstream. I know that you dealt with that, you know, on yourself. Uh, but, I, but do you, do you find that things have changed a little? Do you find that, um, 
you know, music with the message like you have, like artists like Lauren and, and other people have, do you find that it's more um, accepted in the mainstream world now? Um, yeah, I mean, to me, it's two completely different landscapes. Mm -hmm. And back in the 90s, the, even the way that we just discovered music you know, it's, it's just totally, it's totally different now. There was a lot more, um, for a song to be heard, it had to be on the radio. Right. I mean, way back when there was like, there were, uh, it was word of mouth, but you had to find music. It was not accessible. And so, um, I mean, the beautiful thing about today is everything is access is accessible. Um, I guess that's good and bad. I was going to say, I said it's beautiful, but for the artists, it's also like, Ugh. Yeah. <laughs> I know, but I just think in the end, songs connect with people. Yeah. Uh, and then, and for, you know, for every artist, it, they, they, there's a million ways to live life, but through our songs, people will say, oh, well, that's their slant on life. I mean, that's true of every genre. Yeah. You know, you can hear mm -hmm. a song and go, oh, I love that song. I don't, I mean... I do or don't relate to that, the life that it came from, but yeah. I'm moved by that music. And mm -hmm. I do feel like there is, um, I, I mean, I, I just, I feel like at any given time in the history of music, there are always circles that are open and want to hear everything. And, but it's, you know, it's just one, it's just one listener at, at a time. The right song at the right time can be a game changer for a person, mm -hmm. especially yeah. when it has to do with faith. Yes. You know, absolutely. Um, and, and I think a lot of people connect with faith music uh, the most deeply when they're going through a struggle. Oh, yeah. They're like, does anybody know what this feels like? And then a song will come along. And even if they've never walked into a church building, they're like, oh, this song makes it, I'm holding on to this, like. Right, you know, <laughs> yes, like, for dear life, life, this is yes. my, yes. Yeah. That's awesome. Have you noticed um, just being an artist that's been able to have such a reach? Can you kind of share the impact of that? Because I do feel like we still sometimes have that narrow-minded view, not we, but you know, some people in our circles um, would have the narrow-minded view, like, no, you're supposed to preach the message in just the safe places, you know, because then you can get taken away <laughs> by Satan or something. Um, do you, what, what would you say has been the impact of having that broad reach that you had? You know, there's people who know, I mean, Amy Grant, who never were, were Christian at all, you know? Yeah, I don't, um, I, I have wonderful artist friends. I'm thinking one person in particular. I love, love, love this person. And their mantra is, everything I do has got to glorify God. Mm -hmm. And this is all I want to do. And there's so much joy that comes from that person. And then, but I go, there's so much joy in what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And I'm compelled to do something different than you are. Mm -hmm. And so I think I, I just think of it more in terms of, I, I just think we all occupy slightly different places and that's mm -hmm. okay. That mm -hmm. is okay. And so, um, and, and once again, you know, people connect to music because it's feeding something in them. Oh, yeah. It's helping something or just connecting in some way. And so, um, you know, I've, I've, from a creative standpoint, I think we all, it would be great if we were all a little braver <laughs> to, mm -hmm. to say, if, if I were not afraid of anybody's opinion, Mm -hmm. just in life in general what if right. we really if we weren't afraid of what anybody else thought I wonder if we would take up the space in which we live differently right. I wonder if we would reach out to somebody differently I mean they're you know it's just worth it's asking good. yeah I love that 
Um, this past year was insane. <laughs> 2020 just kind of threw a wrench in the road for everyone. Yeah. Um, and you, you know, you like everyone else, we, we were all forced to kind of stand still and not do the norm uh, of what we, we'd done. Um, how was that for you? Was there something that came out of that season of not touring? I mean, I can't even imagine touring for as long as you've toured. Um, just that, you know, and then not doing it for a while. Was there something that came out of that season for you? Um, yes. Well, a lot of time at home. Um, <laughs> and touring kind of goes, it, it, it kind of goes in seasons, you know. And, True. and we, we had just launched probably the biggest tour in 10 years and mm -hmm. we had barely started it and then everything shut down um what i will mostly remember about 2020 um <clears throat> is just how much uh i'd never spent that much time at home i had never spent that much time with my husband because he also mm -hmm. travels right um and our last child, who we, we had been empty nesters, you know, I mean, just since the fall of 2019. And I loved being a mom. I had two kids in my 20s, one in my 30s, and my last at 40. And wow. in our blended family, I inherited our oldest uh, when I married her dad, and she was 17. <clears throat> of course, now she's 39. Wow. <laughs> but... Um, <laughs> I just, it was the longest, um, it's just the longest time I've, I've ever been in one place. Mm -hmm. And, and, to, and for our youngest daughter to come back home from college. And that was just such a gift. And, um, and, you know, I think the game changing gift was all of us were, uh, we had so few distractions and we were so aware of each other. We are aware, more aware of each other's pain. We are more, more aware of each other's worldwide experience of COVID. More right. aware of our, um, more aware of uh, racism. More yeah. aware of our own limitations. You know, so many things that we experience in community. Everybody was isolated. And so you go, oh, well, like apart from the team, I can't do nearly what I thought I could do. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think there were just so many hidden gifts in that year. And yeah. um, I mean, I've, I have never been so aware of the people that really keep the, com the country running. Wow. The people that aren't getting the big paychecks. Right. But the people that show up every day and make it right. happen. You would, if all these people didn't come to work, life would come to a screeching halt. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I, I'll never be in the checkout in the grocery store again and not just look in the face of that man or woman and just, wow, thank you. Thank right. you. And I had a hospital <clears throat> stay during COVID. Yes. <laughs> which made me so aware of the healthcare community and just how important nurses are. The head of right. the ICU nursing staff came into my room the night after I had had surgery. And he was just so, he was such a bright light and so lovely. And he said, I'm not assigned to you, but I just want you to know you're in good hands. And um, I was asking him all about the early COVID cases. And so that was June of 2020. And you know, by December, he had passed away from COVID. Oh. Serving the people in oh that hospital. God. And so it was just like, whoo, I, I mean, that is, that's humbling. It makes you realize that wow. so many people um, were affected so deeply in that year. And we were, mu we were just more aware of each other in so many wow. ways. To me, that was the gift. Whew. Wow. That made me emotional. That's crazy. But um, but but how amazing were you, that was it that you were even able to have a moment with him and see his light? Um, my God, that's really something. Um, you did have open heart surgery in the midst of all this, um, and I know you know you said in an interview that the doctor had a gut feeling to check you out, which to me is like what? Because that's not God. I don't know what is. I know. <laughs> 
how how is it now? I know it's um, you know, I've, I've read that you've gained an even better perspective on life um, after such a invasive surgery. Right. Well, the first thing I, you know, I'm. I think I was t telling all my friends, go check everything out, <laughs> even if you, right. think okay. <laughs> you know, and I think all of us are, um, we have to be reminded to, I mean, you know, like That's we true. brush our teeth and do the stuff, you know, if we're bleeding, we put a band aid on it, but it is, life is a gift and you have to say, just, just go make sure everything's okay. Yeah. And, um, anyway, and honestly, I was, I'm so grateful. Yes, it was, it was scary, but um, it was fixable. And I have such a deep respect and compassion for people that have ongoing health issues, that it's not something that can be fixed with one surgery. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, and just, um, that was really the biggest lesson probably in it for me is that mm -hmm. there are people that are navigating a health journey every day and they take a deep breath and they go, Ooh, okay. I'm going to just put my best foot forward and love the people that I'm around, but they've got a whole thing going on that's present yeah. every day mm -hmm. in their life. Those are the people I have respect for. I called, I called a friend who, has one of those ongoing journeys and I just felt differently about her daily experience mm -hmm. and because I just had a little tiny taste of it and I called her one day and said how are you doing and she said you know it took a long time for me to get out of bed today mm -hmm. I just kind of stayed under the covers and then I finally got up but you know just those subtle things about the the things that we that everybody's carrying a lot more than they let on Everybody. Yeah, yeah, so true. Well, I'm grateful for the gift of you that the Lord allowed us to to continue to have you and and to even have the doctor want to really check you. I mean, I, I really think it was it was just divine intervention, really. Um, I know that you often talk about the importance of unity, and we can end it here. If there's anything else you'd like to add, please feel free. Okay. But um, you know, I definitely think unity is something that has been greatly threatened um, all, all of our existence because you know <laughs> the enemy hates unity, but especially as you said, just in 2020, we were able to kind of really see things for what they were. And, and there were some big schisms and things that, that were just brought to the forefront. Can you talk about um, what does that mean? You know, I think people think sometimes there's a narrow-minded view of unity when they hear, you know, you hear somebody say unity, you think, well, that means you have to agree with everything. You have to, uh, be they have to believe exactly what you believe. They have to look how you look. Can you explain uh, that, the importance of unity and what that really looks like for you? Um, yes. I mean, unity just means standing together, bringing your differences. And, but to unity is seeing the world around you, the people around you in an inclusive way. You know, I think about astronauts in outer space, something goes wrong, Houston, we have a problem. Well, <laughs> you know, it's like to look at the world with we as, you know, we, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it requires a certain amount of trust and, um, because none of us sees life with this, you know, we, we, we've got different backgrounds, but, but just the language of respect is so important. The language of respect. And, um, yeah, I mean, it's funny to be in a, as we start to gather again and be in groups, mm -hmm. I think there was a naivete that I know I had going into life in general, just because my eyes had not been opened. Mm -hmm. And, and all of the, like I'm thinking the other day, there's a woman that I've maybe had coffee with twice. She's half my age. 
we met at a uh, a banquet of, that was honoring different philanthropies, and then she left Nashville and moved to New York. And she was in town visiting, and we were, um, and we got together just for a quick visit. I have never said to her, because you know I I'm a middle aged white woman and she is a young black woman living in New York, and I said. What was it like when you were a kid? Like, where did you go to school? What was it like? Mm -hmm. And she said, um, well, you know, honest, I was one of just a handful of, um, I went to a white school. And she said, really, that's what I did. And my dad was a pastor. And so that, I had that community. But she said, you know, I wonder, I, and, and then we talked about the children that she might eventually have. But I, to me, the important thing about unity is to be so aware of our differences. Yeah. And then to respectfully say, my, my experience was this. What was your experience? And be more about, you know, observing and listening to understand, not to hold somebody up to your measuring stick or mm -hmm. for you to be held up to theirs, but to go... Well, my perspective was, you know, I, I, I mean, there's just the discussion is never ending. And, you know, so many times I, you know, I walk into a room and now I walk in and go, I'm a 60 year old Caucasian woman. Mm -hmm. And for this to walk into a room for somebody is going to be like, oh, and for somebody else is going to be. Oh, mm -hmm. depending on what their life experience has been. Mm -hmm. But we've got yeah. the opportunity to step into that space in the middle and go, hi, help me see you, and I'll try to help you see me. Yeah. And we'll, to me, it's uh, unity, even the discussion of unity is all, it starts one-on-one. -on -one. It just starts with how we value and see anybody. Yeah. But the language of respect you know, and just, um, you have to be brave. You have to be brave because fear makes people behave in all kinds of ways, you know. Yeah. And you just have to go, well, <laughs> this is so weird. Every once in a while, I will have this conversation with myself. It sounds so bizarre. Um, well, this thing that you're doing, if if you died doing this, is this okay with you? Mm -hmm. Like if something happened and it heated up real fast yeah. and I go, yeah, that'd be okay with me. Mm -hmm. Like what, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like there are times where you just go, I, if you're trying, if you're trying to reach out, I don't know. I'm not saying I want like, Hey, I'm about to rob a convenience store. <laughs> Is it okay? <laughs> but you know, I'm, I, I don't know. You just go, you just have, we have to, whatever we think um, uh, I just think seeing the seeing the world as we and finding language for respect and trying to approach each other with more humility saying I don't know all the ways I've done it wrong mm -hmm. but I'm open I'm open to seeing life differently I mean how would that change our marriages? The times when <laughs> right. my husband approach each other and we've been like, <sighs> and exactly. I, go, I can't even figure out all the ways I'm doing it wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't even know myself. And, yeah. you know, it's just like, I mean, everything starts one-on-one. -on -one. I love that. And, you know, I, I think about Jesus when you say that, because I think why Jesus was so criticized, he sat with people who were so different than he was. Um, was because it was different for other people to do that. But he saw the individual. He never saw whatever it was that they were doing. He saw them. And it's kind of what, you know, changed all of their lives um, for the better. It was Jesus, of course. Wow. I thank you so much. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share or to add um, that you want people to know? Mm. I've so enjoyed this conversation with you. Mm -hmm. I have, and I wish I could hear you sing. <laughs>